Hello everyone, I'm Elfals, and welcome to another match analysis for the Newport Noctals. Last time we played in week 2 of the Wooper Club League against Greg and his Quiet Majesty, and grabbed a 5-0 victory off the back of Great Tusk to go 2-0 for the season. This time I'm up against John and the Close Combat Club. I've played a lot of matches against John since I've joined the league. I'm sure I've played and lost to him in the VDC seasons 3 and 5, although at this point I don't remember those seasons too well. Uh, and then he took a close win against me in the season 7 playoffs of the league. But after that, I kind of started playing him pretty consistently well in draft after Season 8. I've kind of had his number. He beat me pretty handily in Week 1 of the Multi-Battle Season 9, alongside Fruit Taco. But outside of that, the Noctowls have played and beat the Close Combat Club in every season. I'm hoping to keep that up, but it'll be tough against John's impressive team, which consists of Noivern, Iron Treads, Palafin, Volcarona, Rotom Frost, Grimmsnarl, the Dunsparce, Iron Hands, Rabska, Quagsire, and Amoongus. There's a very imposing offensive core in its top tiers with Palafin, Volcarona, and Iron Treads, and plenty of bulk to su support it, uh, as that uh, John Classic Amoongus is sitting there, being annoying as ever. We have some other stuff like uh, the Amoongus Quagsire core, which I think will be a ma major factor in this matchup. It'll be pretty annoying to break through, but I have some pretty good answers to them, but I don't, I don't really care about what they're doing with some of my switch-ins, which is good. I also think that, at least for this matchup, John's team is pretty top-heavy. I, I just think some of those low tiers aren't really doing him any favors, but let's talk about more that more with the individual threats. Okay, the Dunsparce. This thing can probably do something productive with, it, with this huge move pool, but come on, it's a Dunsparce. I don't really know what it's supposed to do, so I'm probably underestimating something, but yeah, pass. I have similar thoughts about Rotom Frost. It's actually pretty threatening with Electric and Ice Stabs, but once again, it, it's a Rotom Frost. I just can't be bothered to care about this. That, that sounds harsh, but I really just didn't prep for it at all. Like, I completely ignored its speed tier and everything. And then, Rabska is also down here for me. This one's a little more interesting. I like its special offense, and of course, Revival Blessing is a thing. But it's slow, uh, and kind of with a mediocre typing, so therefore it's not all that threatening. Let's move on to the bigger threats. Deciding on what made it into the top 6 was pretty awkward. I think all the remaining 8 are pretty viable. But I cut Noivern first, because, well, it's generally less threatening off the bat, but that speed tier is nice for John, and Noivern has some pretty good options. I think it's his best hazard remover with Defog, and it could also go more offensive with Terra Normal Boom Burst, which would actually go kind of hard against my team with coverage for my normal resists. I also just cut out Quagsire. It can put in some good work with Stealth Rock and Unaware, but I feel like its matchup is shaky. I already have a Grass type that looks pretty good in the matchup, and a couple of other Pokemon on my side that, like I said, can really just switch in on it and not care about what it's doing, or some others that can just choose to run random Grass coverage. Alright, onto the scariest six. We're going to zoom right through. Amoongus is similar to Quagsire in that it's an annoying utility mon that I have a few dedicated answers to, but it also directly counters a good chunk of my team. Azumarill, Rotom, and Dondozo can all be hard stopped by it, at least under most circumstances, so it'll be annoying to play around. Iron Hands is also a big threat. It's funny because at the beginning of the generation, I didn't really understand what it was supposed to do in singles, but it really is as simple as 154 base HP and 140 base attack. This thing will take multiple strong hits and hand them back in return to trade positive with something. It's not the biggest problem for my team, since I do have plenty of physical bulk, but that is before talking about the potential for terrestrialization to feed his checks, or setup with Swords Dance or even Belly Drum to boost his damage out to output to insane levels. And that trading or setup potential is a lot more realistic when you factor in Grim Snarl, which would basically be here to set up those pranks for dual screens and parting shot and turn all of John's offensive threats into complete setup monsters to deal with. I do have ways to block the Parting Shot pivoting by being immune to Prankster, but every one of my options for that would be weak to one of Grimmsnarl's stab moves, so that would be a little risky to try, uh, but at, at the very least, I am going to try to bring one way to break those screens as part of my prep. And speaking of utility roles that could be surprisingly threatening, Iron Treads is another future form to match my Great Tusk. I do think I got the better one here, but Treads is still a very valuable pick. Rocks and Hazard Removal is what it probably does best here, but it also has a pretty decent base attack to threaten with Earthquake, as well as coverage like Ice Spinner to hit its checks. An offensive variant can do quite a bit more damage than I was expecting to see in, the, in my calcs, so I'll need to bring some physically defensive answers to it. Up next is Volcarona, which terrified me in prep, just thinking about a basic Quiver Dance set. 
After one boost, it can do crazy damage to just about anything on my team if it has the right move, and it can even terrestrialize for extra coverage or for a new defensive profile. I do think that this is the most likely Terra candidate just to beat any rock or water coverage that I might have to stop setup, and from there it, it could just take the game under the right circumstances. Luckily for me, I do think it suffers from 4 move slot syndrome in this matchup. It kind of needs its fire and bug stabs, but it would need some more specific coverage options for things like Azumarill and Iron Moth on my side, and that's already more than 4 move slots on top of Quiver Dance uh, without even thinking about something like Morning Sun for recovery. So it, it can't do everything it probably wants to, but it is still a giant threat. And finally, Palafin is what I'm most afraid of in this matchup. 160 base attack is ludicrous, especially when you, the rest of its stats are also good, so this thing can pull off some extreme calcs with a choice band or a boosting bulk upset. Or it could go choice scarf to outspeed and kill all of my offensive threats, although with jet punch it might not even need a scarf to do that. It's true that it cannot terrestrialize in our league, and I have my fair share of <laughs> fair share of checks for it, but it has enough coverage alongside a potential taunt set for my most defensive answers, so I'm going to have to pack multiple ways to deal with this thing. And as part of my prep, I want to prevent it from getting into its hero form for free. That's going to start right away with Great Tusk, packing a weakness policy in Rapid Spin to potentially sweep at some point. One idea here is actually to lead with this in case of a Palafin lead, and if we manage to get a Rapid Spin off on its flip turn out, we're suddenly at plus 2 attack, plus 1 speed, and Great Tusk could go on a tear starting on turn 2. Now, I'm not actually relying to, on that, and I'm not even really expecting that to happen on turn 1. I think John is good enough to find a better time to get Palafin in and out, but this is more insurance in case that's the lead he does go with. Plus, Great Tusk definitely has other opportunities to activate that weakness policy against weaker moves or non-stab coverage from things like the Quagsire or like Ice Punch from the Iron Hands. Headlong Rush and Rock Slide get pretty good neutral coverage on the team, and we're Terra Grass with Terra Blast. This helps with a few things. Quagsire would avoid the 2 hit KO from Headlong Rush no matter what, thanks to Unaware, while Terra Blast just blows it up. And this also helps out against a Revenging Palafin to Terra ourselves into a Water Resist for that Jet Punch. The speed is just to outrun Noivern after a rapid spin boost, since, like I said, I'm completely ignoring Rotom Frost in prep. The set is a bit gimmicky, but I do see a lot of potential for it here. And speaking of gimmicky, we have Iron Moth here with a Mirror Herb. Now, hear me out, I didn't see the need for any other item here, and we'll get into the Mirror Herb in a second. But in general, Iron Moth should be a pretty great special attacker in this matchup. It threatens really heavy damage on just about everything with stab moves plus energy balls coverage, it outspeeds Iron Shreds, and its defensive typing actually isn't too bad here either. It's one of my best switch-ins to Rotom Frost if that comes, and it also walls Volcarona stabs and recovers back with Morning Sun. And yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we get to the Mirror Herb. We can switch in on most Volcarona sets to take its hits, but we can't exactly consistently stop it from boosting up in front of us. So why not just get a one-time boost alongside it without even using up a turn? From there, Fiery Dance threatens to boost us up even further, and that plus Sludge Wave could theoretically 2 hit KO Volcarona. And then, if we won that matchup with the Quiver Dance boost up, what can even take a hit or revenge us? Well, Palaf and Jet Punch can revenge, but that's why I have Terra Grass on here as well. Yeah, there's a reason why they didn't give Iron Moth Quiver Dance. This could be very fun and devastating. Now, I do really quick want to get into a little more of my logic behind these first two sets. They're probably my best offensive Pokemon for the matchup, and I went with pretty gimmicky ideas for them. Not that I think they're bad, but they both rely on my opponent's actions to get to their full potential. Well, based on the way things tend to go, I can see John being a pr big playoff threat. Sometimes people want to hold back on certain strategies that you might want to save for playoffs if you think the rematch is likely. I don't usually do that, I just, you know, the goal is to win, but I saw the gimmicky opportunities here and decided that they're fun and that I think I can make them work while saving more consistent offensive strategies for a potential playoffs match later on. And all that's on top of the fact that I feel very comfortable with the low opportunity costs of these gimmicky strategies. Great Tusk and Iron Moth are two Pokemon that, at least for my team comp, they never feel like they need specific items to pull off regular gameplay, so I can definitely afford to go a little off kilter with the item slot. And I really love that about those two. Alright, I know that was a, a bit long-winded, but most of the team from here out, on out should be pretty self-explanatory. Next up we're going to have Azumarill, which is running an Assault Vest with max HP to be a more direct check into things like Volcarona and Noivern. We take hits pretty well from those and hit back pretty hard in return, so the goal is to trade down with one of those two. 
Uh, this is also my Brick Break user, in case screens go up, since Azumarill shouldn't be taking too much damage from any moves from the Grimmsnarl. I originally wanted that move slot to be focused on better coverage, specifically something like Ice Spinner, but I like the utility of Brick Break, and I'm okay with being walled by Amoongus, considering my next pick, which is Fortress. With max physical defense and leftovers, this should be able to consistently switch into Iron Treads, Quagsire, and Amoongus without too much trouble, and then pick the right move for the situation. I love how the moveset fits here. We can sit in front of every hazard setter that I think he's going to bring and spin away, which he can set, uh, which, and we can set rocks on the flip switch, pivot out with Volt Switch, or we have Body Press as an option that chunks down things like Iron Treads. The abilities Overcoat to block Amoongus' Spore and really not care about anything it wants to do. And the Terra type is fighting, a weird one, but only one I'm planning to use if I want stronger body presses for any particular reason. Moving right along, we have a debut with Rota Mo carrying a Choice Scarf this week. This is kind of my main line of defense against Palafin. We should take any water move just fine, and we have just enough special attack investment to always one-hit KO back with Leaf Storm. This also has a pretty decent use as a general Scarf pivot. It also the entire team, including Noivern. And Volt Switch looks pretty free since I would imagine the ground types are pretty hesitant to switch in on a potential Leaf Storm or Will O Wisp. I have Trick as an option here, mostly because it cripples Amoongus, which otherwise walls us, and even without a Scarf Rotom is a nice bulky check to things like the Palafin, Iron Treads, and Quagsire. Terra Electric is kind of the default to boost up Volt Switch and shed the fire and Ike's weaknesses for certain matchups, but we probably shouldn't be using this Terra. And lastly, we actually have the final debut of the season with Ferrigraph. Yes, after this I will have brought every single Mon at least once. This is the third potential sweeper I'm running this week, but it's a much more dedicated sweeper than Great Tusker Iron Moth, getting with, uh, in with a double dance set with Sword Power. This is mostly meant to exploit Grimmsnarl, since it's immune to the Prankster Parting Shot thanks to our priority blocking Armor Tail, which also helps against things like Jet Punch Palafin. But anyway, if we're getting in on Grimmsnarl, we can hopefully get up both Agility and Nasty Plot, maybe even multiple Nasty Plots while it sets up screens. We're theoretically weak to Grimmsnarl's Dark moves, but I feel like it would just run Fairy coverage this week, given my multiple Dark types, uh, which they really don't do that much to us thanks to Furgraph's HP investment. Yes, Spirit Break would be annoying with its secondary effect of lowering special attack, but Nasty Plot could outdo it to the point where we can just chunk it down with Dazzling Gleam, win that matchup, and then continue sweeping the rest of the team from there. Terra Fairy is a decent option to power that up and avoid certain bad type matchups, and we're running enough speed so that after an agility we could creep uh, Noivern creeping Iron Moth. Yeah, I did cheat on the speed a little bit, but I'm hoping Noivern won't be the biggest issue for us and we can get multiple agility boosts if we need to, something like that. Um, I have a lot of uh, hopes for this set. Stored power against this team looks pretty good, supported by that Dazzling Gleam, so let's see if I can put in the work. So, that's the team. Uh, it feels a little weird not running Dondozo when there's a Palafin on the other side, but between Rotomo and two big Grass-type Terra users, which I'm playing a Terra, one of those two, that thing should still be checked pretty decently. Uh, it's kind of a strange team, but I think we have a game plan. Hey, we love to see more 3D models implemented on Showdown. Furgraph looks great! Anyway, no Iron Treads is super weird. And no Amoogus is a little unexpected, but given the matchup in the Fortress, I guess I kind of get that. That leaves Quagsire, which I'm actually pretty happy to see, and Noivern, which could be the hazard remover, but it could also be very tough to switch into if it's more offensive. I'll have to consider Azumarill for it. But since there is a Palafin, I'll still lead with my plan Great Tusk, just in case that Palafin decides to lead itself. Good luck, have fun to John. And it's going to be the Grimmsnarl lead that does just make sense. This is awkward, though. I wish I had let Azumarill now, and I could switch into it for the Brick Break on turn 2, assuming Grimmsnarl is going for screens. I also know that I need damage on this thing, and that would help out Furgraph a ton later, and even through Reflect, Great Tusk can get a good chunk of damage off here and now. But there's also the fact that if it goes for a Fairy move instead, that completely spoils my weakness policy plan. But there's no way he does that, anything but a Reflect here, right? I'm gonna go for my chip damage. That is the Reflect we got the read right. Uh, as Headlong Rush does a modest 32%. That's in line with max defense, no HP, meaning that I think this thing is maxed out on both defense stats. I'll keep that in mind for later, but for now I think I'll switch to Azumarill on the light screen. Am I right? Nope. Parting shot. Into, what do we see, but the ooh, Iron Hands. Well, that's bad. That's a good play on John's part, no need to waste time on a light screen. But what do I do here? 
Azumarill could break the Reflect now, or just go for a pretty weak play rough, to be honest. But that feels like a non-option. Azumarill is way too important later to risk now. Uh, so I'm going to switch out into Rotom, which could tank an electric move as it goes for a... Ooh, Swords Dance, uh-oh. Well, if it goes for Close Combat or Ice Punch here, Rotom is probably dead, and I don't think I can really switch anything in. That's just how strong Iron Hands is. But I, I do think I need to do something productive here. That's either going to be Will-O-Wisp or Trick. Willow would prevent Rotom from dropping this turn, but I really don't want to be locked into that. What, what, what would I do the next turn? So Trick it is, and I'm accepting that it might cost me my Rotom, but it cripples Iron Hands for the rest of the match at the very least. And Rotom is probably one of my less important team members, so let, let's just make the play. Trick, uh, right, they get the Citrus Berry, weird, and that's a Swords Dance, that's perfect. So that Iron Hands is in a straight jacket for the rest of the battle, and it didn't even cost me my Rotom. Okay, well, there's zero chance he stays in here, so I can just predict the switch out. Hmm. But I don't want Quagsire coming in to block that Volt Switch, so maybe just a hard swap to Azumarill? Uh, which matches well into just about anything as John switches to uh, Volcarona. So, uh, this is a good matchup, but I probably should have just been fine to Volt Switch for some chip on that. Like, was Quagsire really going to switch in on a Rotom Mo? It, it's kind of a misplay for me, I'll be honest, but this is still fine. Uh, Azumarill is kind of the Volcarona check already, but I have a few doubts. The Volk is behind a Reflect, and John has yet to reveal his Terramon. So in my mind, he either switches out here, or he goes for his Terrastalization now, and starts boosting up in front of me, maybe with some kind of water resist. So I think I'll try to cover both plays with a double into Iron Moth, which will copy the Quiver Dance boost if that's what he goes for, but John will also double into Palafin. That's awkward. Energy Ball sure is tempting here, but this Palafin could just outspeed me, and my calcs are telling me that even in this baby form, Flip Turn does a huge chunk and Wave Crash just KOs me, so I really can't justify staying in here. I'll just have to go back into Rotom, I guess, as he's just going to Flip Turn out uh, right back into the Volcarona. That tells me that the Palafin is probably Scarfed, but uh, let's also point attention to the fact that I just triple switched. It's turn 8, and I have clicked two moves in this battle, one of which actually dealt damage. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a close combat club match without the excessive pivoting, I guess. And it's fine. Uh, I really haven't lost much to this pivoting game. Uh, on the subject, though, I'm going to have to pivot out again. That's right, the quadruple switch back into Iron Moth on Volcarona for similar reasons as before. And this time we actually do get him on the Quiver Dance. Awesome. Well, uh, that's our boost, and we might as well stay in, execute the plans, uh, fire dance, dance away. But that is a swap out to Quagsire. Probably smart, uh, but at least I stopped the setup on the Volcarona. This is an interesting spot, though, because an energy ball would obviously blow back this Quagsire, uh, which we just saw has leftovers uh, right here. <laughs> uh, no Rindo Berry or anything like that. So realistically, this is either a pivot out, a sack, or a terrestrialization on the Quagsire. And if it terrestrializes to survive the energy ball, I don't want to get folded by an earthquake, so I'll match it with my terror to resist. I'll go grass as Quagsire goes poison, so energy ball does just about nothing as he pulls out the haze. Damn, he ran haze on this. That sucks. Iron Moth Quiver Dance boost ended up being very short lived. On one hand, wouldn't it have been cool if I caught the Quagsire on the switch with energy ball? And realistically, though, that wasn't happening. And I do think going for my Terra here was actually a mistake. The only reason to Terra here was to prevent a Terra Quagsire from KOing me with Earthquake, but if John had used up his Terra while well, I didn't, even if Iron Moth had been KO'd for it, I probably would have been in a much better spot for the rest of the battle. John turning his Quagsire into a Poison type means that both Great Tusk and Ferrigraph do way better against it, and more importantly, he can't Terra his Volcarona anymore. So his Terra being expended in this way is pretty great for me, uh, but we'll see if mine being used up affects the battle later. I can at least enjoy the benefits of a Grass-type Iron Moth against things like the Halton, but yeah, we'll see. For now, anyway, I'll go for the damage that I can get relatively safely. Uh, I shouldn't be weak to anything this Quagsire is packing, I don't think it's a poison move. So my Fire Dance is just going to go in to 39%, as he's just going to get up his rocks. This looks like a 2 KO, so um, I'll just go for Fiery Dance again. But the next one only does 37. We get a low roll here as he just recovers back up from 1%. I'll try to Fiery Dance again here, uh, but it's pretty clear at this point 
that I'm, I'm not going to be breaking through this thing. It's just going to recover off the damage. It's pretty clearly unaware. So I just got to get out of here to do a better matchup, I think. Uh, Fortress really shouldn't care about anything this Quagsire wants to do. So I'm going to come in as it actually just goes for the Haze. So we're completely safe as I'm just going to spin away the rocks on whatever he decides to do. So uh, get that on the Noivern. Now, I don't really want to stay in here. Uh, <clears throat> I, this Noivern could flamethrower and Azumarill always comes in as my nice dedicated check to Noivern. Uh, but we'll actually just come in and we're immune to the Draco. Not sure what John was trying to cover there, but it worked out. Next, Noivern swaps out, I think here, into Iron Hands, and I actually make the double back into Fortress, and looking back, I don't actually remember what my logic was for doing this. I kind of feel like Play Rough would have been just fine to hit any switch in and then react from there. I think I was playing the switching game way too much here, but it actually does pay off for me. We have a free turn against Scarfed Iron Hands. Uh, we're just gonna stay in. Wild Charge only does 22% as I get my rocks up. And they should help me out a ton in this big pivoting game we're playing. And now, just so I can pivot out, uh, I am not afraid of anything Iron Hands wants to do. I'm gonna Bolt Switch. As the Noivern comes in, it does reveal its boots as I Bolt Switch and bring in a zoom roll on it. And I think it's going to be here that I recognize that I need to start making progress on John's team at some point, and this is the perfect opportunity. Azumarill is pr primed to fire off a big attack, and we will do so. As the Noivern actually prioritizes clearing the rocks, and we get our first KO of the match on turn 20. Uh, we will have the opportunity to make more progress as the Grimmsnarl comes in, Reflect goes up, and we bring it down real low with the next play rush. The next turn from me should absolutely be a brick break, and the Grimmsnarl uh, whatever it decides to do, I'm just going to break that screen. It does just parting shot out again, this time into the Volcarona directly, as I break the Reflect and get a little chip. Now, despite the fact that I am at lowered attack, this is already my check to Volcarona, and Liquidation should still be doing a ton of damage to it, so I'm just going to go for it. Uh, Quaver Dance up, as my Liquidation takes it down to 11%, uh, but a held Citrus Berry bumps it back up. I now see why the Noivern prioritized Defog so much. Uh, but it looks like Aqua Jet KO is here anyway. So I'm just gonna go for that. And that's Volcarona down without doing anything. Now, that did look real easy, uh, but would but you might be wondering about Flame Body, which John confirmed to me after the KO that Volcarona did have, so kind of a risk, right? A, a burn on one of the first two hits into that Volcarona would have been pretty bad, probably giving it a better set of opportunity. I think Azumarill would have been able to handle it. We would probably need to switch out to reset the attack drop and uh, probably Great Tusk to force it to take a KO instead of boosting multiple times. And then Azumarill could come back in and then potentially KO with two liquidations and an Aqua Jet, even through the burn. Uh, we should be surviving a couple of plus one Giga Drains, so I think I would be okay there. Not completely sure though, uh, and at the very least, it would have used up some resources for us to beat it. And if Volcarona was able to power through Azumarill, which, you know, like I said, I'm not sure if it would have, I don't think I had any other way to stop it. Uh, it was kind of sweeping the rest of my team from there. So this interaction was much more close in game deciding than it may have looked. Not to say that I think I played that interaction particularly poorly, but John did force a pretty big grist on, onto me there. Uh, Azumarill was a much shakier check than it should have been. Uh, after that party shot and the potential burns. But that's the way it worked out, and that's the way we're going to play. Anyway, uh, next up is going to be Iron Hands in, and I mean, I was pretty happy with how little damage Fortress took from it before, so this should be a pretty easy swap out for me, as John's going to double into the Palafin. No complaints here, but let's just take whatever hit and pivot out with Volt Switch. Um, Wave Crash comes out, only does 38%. Fortress is a defensive monster, and we can Volt Switch out actually do some solid damage, and we can get right into something that threatens it, I'm going to go with Iron Moth. Obviously this is a good matchup with the Grass typing, uh, but no way does John sack off his Palafin right now. Uh, this is the easiest Quagsire read. I could cover it with Great Tusk, but I am at least going to cover the potential Wave Crash by just going Rotom Mo. as, of course, as expected, he just does go for the Quagsire. I'll, I'll note here that the Palafin swapped out first, that does confirm he's faster than me. So it's Scarf, we know that now. Anyway, based on Quagsire's moveset so far, it looks like I can't really do anything significant to Rotom. So this is a pretty risk-free way to hit a Will-O-Wisp on this turn. Please hit, thank you. 
Uh, we're just going to stop that passive recovery while it does just get up its rocks. At this point, I'm not too sure what John wants to do. He's running a little low on options against Rotom, so I'm just going to scout with Bolt Switch. Uh, we'll hit that <coughs> into whatever we need to. It's just going to be the Iron Hands that takes it. And for the second game in a row, I'm looking at a potential Great Tusk setup opportunity. If I come in here, this Iron Hands might just have Ice Punch to hit me, proccing the weakness policy strat if I Rapid Spin on it. Even if it just uses something like Close Combat and doesn't proc the item, Rapid Spin just removes the rocks anyway and I pick up the KO with Headlong Rush, right? It's worth a tough shot to try, at least. So that's going to be Great Tusk in, and Rapid Spin will boost our speed. Please hit me with Ice Punch. And it's Ice Punch! There's the weakness policy boost. Now, unfortunately, Great Tusk does not have its Grass Terra option, so that Scarf Palafin in the back will revenge us if we're just at plus one speed. So another Rapid Spin would get us over that hump, and I'm not too worried about the extra Ice Punch damage. Let's just continue setting up another Rapid Spin, and Ice Punch comes in, of course, and <laughs> freezes. Well, I'll admit I kind of did this to myself. If I still had my gr Terra Grass on this, I would have just gone for the KO here, but instead I had to open myself up to this chance if I wanted to sweep. At this point, it's not the most upsetting thing in the world. If Great Tusk, Tusk doesn't thaw here, it's just useless, so I might as well just either thaw or sack it off. And we actually do thaw and get the KO with Headlong Rush, so none of that mattered. That's kind of funny. Uh, well, looks kind of like another Great Tusk sweep. Let's see how far we can take it home. Quagsire comes in, but Unaware will not help you if you're part Poison type, and a super effective Headlong Rush takes it. Next up is Palafin. Uh, we would have gone down there if it was Jet Punch, but I mean, um, if it had it, it had it. I was just going to go for it, but it did not reveal it. So we're just going to take the next KO, outspeed the Scarf Palafin, and then Grimmsnarl is trivial. We can just take one last KO uh, to take the game 6-0. Good game to John. I know it's a 6-0, but as you might have noticed from the analysis, it was a much more involved battle than the final score would have you believe. As he always does, John played well and made me think very hard about every decision I made in this battle. I think I did a pretty good job of explaining what went right and wrong for me, so I'll be brief here and just talk about the sets that I brought. Uh, Azumarill and Fortress were quite standard in their sets, but they did exactly what they were supposed to. Very happy with those two. Uh, Azumarill claiming multiple KOs on special attackers, and Fortress taking physical hits like nobody's business. Did an amazing job with that. I was also really happy with the Rotom set, crippling the Iron Hands, and Trick definitely put me at an early advantage, uh, and having it around in the back for Palafin was quite nice. Furgraph, on the other hand, we didn't get to see it come out at all, but I actually did really like having that in the back. Uh, right around when Great Tusk got frozen, I was pretty comfortable with letting it go down, because it actually looked like Furgraph had quite a good sweeping opportunity against the remaining four mons. As for Iron Moth, I think I already kind of went into what went wrong for it. Yeah, it was a gimmick. Stopped pretty hard by Haze, Terra, Poison, Quagsire, but it at least stopped the first Volker run of setup. That's something, I guess. Still a bit of a disappointment, but that's fine. I wasn't really expecting too much out of it. And as for Great Tusk, well, we saw what it did. It's the kill leader of the conference after this battle, and I'm loving the sets I can bring with it. I'm just going to call that a wrap for week three. So we are now up 3-0 and for the season, moving into week four. That'll be against Sasbo and the Boulder Boldors, who have historically given me some very close and exciting battles, so this will be a fun one. See you next time.